Ooh, trust. Who do we trust? After all, you cannot trust upon your own understanding. You can't trust your heart either because heart is treacherous, isn't it? Who do you trust? Well, you're supposed to trust Jehovah God and his organization. Now, the trust for Jehovah's Witnesses usually meant if you are part of the organization, you can be trusted. And worse off, they would usually say the higher the person is on the privileges, the more trustworthy the person would be. So we have people who not only distrust or mistrust everybody outside of the organization, and they trust almost unconditionally with everybody inside, but they're putting a full trust into people with an authority inside the organization just because the person has a specific privilege. Now, of course, they're putting their full trust into, as they call a faithful and discreet slave, where the governing body basically dictates whatever it is that they want them to believe. And they have to follow. They have no choice. To the point where they can't have a 1%, 1% different opinion. People might, from who were never witnesses, they're like, there's no way. I'm like, come on. <laughs> there's no way that... They have to agree with everything 100%. Yes, they do. And the difference between a Jehovah's Witness and anybody else out there in any other religion is the fact that they are all teachers. Because they are teachers, they have to agree with everything 100%. And the reason for that is because when they go door to door and when they teach, when they start Bible studies, they have to teach other people all the doctrines. They cannot possibly teach something different than what they have been instructed. You cannot say, oh, I agree with every single doctrine out there, but there is this, you know what, birthdays, mm, that's the only thing, that's the only thing I disagree with, and I'm going to celebrate birthdays while everything else I will follow. No, you can't. It's impossible. You have to follow absolutely everything, or you're out, or you're nothing. And no matter how much work you have put in, and how much sacrifice you have put in, it doesn't really matter. However, if you were raised in it, and you were taught not to trust people outside of the organization, and everybody outside was evil, everybody outside was your enemy, and especially those who left the organization, there were those angry apostates who were speaking the twisted things, and they constantly lie or mislead and so on and on, then of course, if you're waking up and you're looking at certain people outside of the organization or websites or even this YouTube channel, you're probably freaking out because you don't know who to trust. You don't know who's telling the truth. You believed very strongly that you're in the truth, that the whole organization is the truth and whatever they were telling you is the truth and you started finding out that some things didn't add up for you. And when you realize enough things didn't add up for you, and maybe you realize that it is not the true religion, and they have a lot of things that are not adding up, <sighs> who do you trust now? Now, we've heard countless times, countless times too many, which is heartbreaking, of including elders who would abuse children, molest children. Can you imagine? An elder would go and disfellowship other people for smoking, for celebrating certain holidays, for having sex before marriage, right? I mean, all those things, he would disfellowship others while he was himself molesting children. And he somehow managed to keep his face straight. I don't, I don't even know how people can do this. But some can. Some can. And yet... When you're in that organization, you're thinking these people are trustworthy and I love them and they're my brothers and sisters. They're my spiritual family. I don't trust my own family who are not witnesses, but the spiritual family I trust. And then when you get burned and most people who leave, they're like, you know what? I really got, got burned. They don't know who to trust because that's what they were taught. Now, I tell you a couple of things that are really a beneficial for you from the whole experience of living and being a witness that actually made you smarter. But before we go there, I tell you what. The problem is not with you not trusting others. 
the problem is with you not trusting yourself that's right because you were programmed into believing that you're not allowed to believe in your own mind believe in your own heart and believe in yourself believe in your own god you can't you're supposed to rely on somebody else telling you what to believe and who to trust and who not to trust so when these people turn against you and now the truth is no longer the truth you don't know who to trust and you're thinking i'm not gonna trust anybody that's it i'm done i'm just gonna trust myself but truthfully you're not First of all, it's impossible not to trust others. You go outside and you walk on the road and there are people who are driving right next to you. And if you don't trust that they will obey the laws, you will not be able to leave your home because you'll be too scared. You're trusting the driver, even the bus driver. Even if you're driving yourself, you're trusting that other people will drive properly. If you've ever been on the airplane, you're trusting not only the pilot, but every single person that was involved with putting and maintaining that aircraft air traffic control and so on and on you're putting your your life into other people's hands all the time we have no choice but to trust but when it comes to our own personal life with religion god bible spirituality maybe you got hurt bad enough you don't know who to trust and now you're shutting down and you're thinking i don't want to trust anybody well a couple of things Number one, you don't trust yourself. What do I mean by that? I mean, you don't trust your own judgment. You're afraid that you're going to put your trust into somebody else and you will not be able to recognize if the person is truthful or not. Because you've done it before. It didn't work well for you. You trusted somebody with your heart and mind and you got burned. And this is the moment when you're thinking, I got to protect myself. Naturally, but truthfully, Anybody can be fooled. No matter how much you try not to, anybody can be fooled. Anybody can become a victim. So I tell you, if you're trusting, you trust people until you get hurt. If they fool you once, shame on them. If they fool you twice, shame on you. So trust people until they they um, misuse your trust, misuse your um uh, yeah, your trust, the fact that you trusted them. If they take advantage of you, right, then you cannot let them take advantage of you again. You have to learn how to cut it off from your own life. But it is your ability now to recognize who to trust and who not to trust. And it's not based on religious status, because that's what it was before. It has to be earned. The trust has to be earned based on people's values. I tell you how to do it actually quite quickly. Because you could, you could be misled very easily by people who are masters are being two-faced. And the way I learned it myself is by simply seeing how business people do it. And business people are at a very top level. They can make decisions of who to trust and who not to trust extremely fast. And I was like, how the heck do they do this? And interestingly, I'll give you one example. Before somebody is promoted to a high position or becoming a business partner, you know what they do? They go play golf. <laughs> it's just one example, but they go play golf. Why do they play golf? Because when they're playing a game, the entire personality comes out. When something doesn't work their way, are they getting frustrated or not? Are they blaming somebody else for their mistake or not? Are they trying to cheat a little bit or not? Are they breaking the rules or not? Are they bending the rules or not? Are they saying, oh, you know what? Just for this game, because it's just a game, I'm going to do this, although it's against the rules. They're watching for those things. They don't care whether you win or not. They don't care how good of a player you are. They want to know your personality while you're playing a game. Why? Because they know one thing. The way you do anything is how you do everything. The way you do anything is how you do everything. If you're still a Bible believer or if you learn from, from the Bible, it says whoever is faithful in least, he will be faithful in much. It's the same thing. You watch somebody how they do little things 
and you'll know how they do big things. If you go and see somebody's car and there is mess in the car, enormous mess. There's like food everywhere. There's garbage everywhere. It smells bad. It's dirty. You cannot possibly expect them to be organized in business. They will never be organized in business. The way people organize their office, the way they organize their room is the extension of their personality. They're not bad people, but they just, this is how they operate. And how they do the little things will show you how they do the bad things. If somebody is coming to you and they're complaining about others and they're talking about other people behind their backs and they're nothing but critical about them, guess what happens? They will be critical about you. Not in front of you, <laughs> in front of somebody else. If somebody, that's all what they do, is trying to find what is the dirt about somebody else, guess what? When they are your friend, they will look at your dirt and spread it to others. That's how they operate. So look what people do. If you have to judge people, and we all do judge people because we want to know whether these people are the people that I want to spend time with because I know that my closest friends will have a strong impact on me. So of course I'm going to judge them, but I don't judge them based on their religion and stuff. I judge them based on their behavior, how they're acting, how they're acting towards me, how they're acting towards their mother, how they're acting towards their friends. Do they have any friends? Right? Are they honest? Are they trying to... to twist certain rules how they're treating the waitress that's believe it or not that's one of the things that the business people do they will take another prospect or a, or a business partner into a restaurant and they'll have a business deal and they'll watch them how this person treats a waitress that's right because they know that that person's personality will be shown a lot more towards a person like a waitress or a waiter than towards a potential customer because you treat the customers like gold but a waitress or a waiter that's where your true personality comes out so those are the things that you can now start learning and recognizing the behavioral patterns to see who you can trust and who you cannot trust not based on what religion the person believes in because that can be very, very misleading, very damaging to you, as a matter of fact. It's very important to learn those skills. And I tell you, the fact that you got burned, the fact that you were in a religion that were not truthful and they constantly said, we have the truth, we're in the truth, and nobody has better truth than us. The fact that you got burned with it trained you so well. And most people actually don't have an idea. The fact that you learn about brainwashing the fact that you learn about gaslighting, narcissism, all those things are extremely valuable because now you can see a similar pattern of behavior in other people. And I tell you, from my own experience, I met people and I'm like, something is odd about this person. They are like the nicest person on the planet. They're literally love bombing me and my wife, my kids. They're just too much. And I'm like, this is not normal. <laughs> the person is not authentic. They're love bombing us. And truthfully enough, later on, we realized the person was very manipulative. They're trying to talk us into something that we didn't want to do. But the pattern of behavior we recognize only because we were witnesses and we studied brainwashing and we studied those effects and we learned what gaslighting is and love bombing and all those things that previously we didn't know. We would fall for it. But now, because we have this experience, it made us smarter. So instead of being less trusty, tr less trustful <laughs> into others, you can be more because now you can rely on your own wisdom a lot more than before because you got smarter. So instead of saying, I don't trust anybody, start trusting yourself and your own judgment and your own skills and your own knowledge and your own experience because you've gained so much from the whole experience of leaving that you could actually pick and choose the right people in your life. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.